Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. We have an extremely important guest today, Rosalind Peterson, a former employee at the U.S. Department of Agriculture for over 10 years. She has worked on a farm in Mendocino and grew up there. She's been a keynote speaker at the United Nations 2007 Climate Change Conference, talking about how agriculture impacts climate change, how it affects the climate. She's also the president and the founder of the Agriculture Defense Coalition at agriculturedefensecoalition.org. It is my great pleasure to talk to this wonderfully experienced, multifaceted woman and researcher, Rosalind Peterson. Welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. Well, thank you, and it's an honor to be on your show today. First of all, thank you for saying that. (laughs) When I went to your site, aside from talking to you and the riveting amount of knowledge that you have, I was pained by many things that I read. One of them I want to talk about, it's extremely sensitive, but it's the U.S. Navy Warfare All Oceans Project. What is the U.S. Navy doing with regard to projects on our oceans that we need to know about? Well, the United States Navy, starting under the Bush administration in 2007, Um, initiated um, uh, warfare ranges all over uh, the Pacific, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Gulf of Mexico. And each of these ranges needed an environmental impact statement. And then there would be a period of time for public comment, and then these programs, these warfare training programs would be implemented. The problem about these programs, um, according to Senator uh, Boxer and Senator Feinstein and Congressman Waxman, is that they will impact 11.7 billion marine mammals. In other words, have the potential to destroy uh, that number of marine mammals. Did you uh, say 11.7 million marine mammals? Yes. And this means to harm, to harass, to kill or to disrupt their uh, breeding habitats, to disrupt uh, them in national marine sanctuaries. This means that the Navy will be using sonar bomb bomb blasts, um, new weapons technology like new forms of laser light sonar. They will be using any number of techniques that will be either classified or unclassified. And each of these ranges will last for five years and that public, and that they can extend that date at will just by putting a notification in the Federal Register. There would be no more public comment. Now, some of these programs that they have initiated are underwater warfare weapons training. They will be using chemicals like depleted uranium, white phosphorus, red phosphorus. Um, There's benzene, the exposure from airborne chemicals, as well as those used in blasts above the surface of the water and blasts below the surface of the water will be very high. I need to go back for a second because I'm freaking out by something you said of the many things you've already just said. Are you telling me that they're going to be, quote, experimenting and doing projects using depleted uranium underwater or on the water or both? Both. Are you sure about that? Well, see, when you blow up um, Hellfire missiles and a lot of the ordnance that contains depleted uranium, yes, because it's in the Navy Environmental Impact Statement. They're literally acknowledging they're using depleted uranium? Yes. Is that posted anywhere on your site? Uh, the Environmental Impact Statement, um, for, uh, for example, for where I live in Northern California, is at www.n w t r a n g e complex c o m p l e x e i s dot com it's about a 1200 page document and you should only download it um one chapter at a time but there is a section on toxic chemicals and they do talk about depleted uranium they do talk about then when they run out of depleted uranium they're going to use titanium um, in other words, a titanium compound, which is just as toxic, to replace it. How can we trust anybody anymore about our oceans and our environment? Seriously. These are so toxic, they don't go away for thousands of years. 
Some of them don't, and the white phosphorus and the red phosphorus are banned by the Geneva Convention, and here we're going to be using them in our oceans. There's no fish, no marine mammal, no no turtle, no bird, anything in the in the range of those of those explosions and testing warfare testing, which will be immune to this. And Senator Boxer, Senator Feinstein, um, Congressman Waxman have all admitted, um, without a doubt, in a letter that every every coastal community will be impacted, and that the um, these tests will take place in national marine sanctuaries, as well as other areas. How come we haven't heard about it all over the official news? Why? Because the official news, uh, except for KTVU Channel 2, Oakland, San Francisco, um, will not cover the story, will not write a story about it. Our senators and congressmen won't talk to the press about it. And there's really um, a blackout because um, they don't want the public to know about these issues. Why would it be in the report then? Is it that they don't think that most people will read the report or someone will take it and translate or communicate what they've read? Well, our senators and congressmen have elected not to tell us, even though they're notified well in advance. What does notification mean? When a senator or congressman or woman has been notified, what does that mean? That means that the environmental impact statement, a booklet, is sent to their offices along with the CD, and they are given this, this notification in advance of it being made public. So how much in advance? Um, I think that they receive theirs probably somewhere around, for our county, uh, in other words, for Northern California, I think they received it about um, November or December in 2008. And then it came out in 2009, there was public comment, and it was a very short public comment time. The Navy is only required to put a postage size um, uh, notice in the newspapers advertising that this is, that there's going to be a meeting. Now, for all of Northern California, they only had one meeting, which was announced by this postage stamp size notification in the back of a newspaper in the advertising section. Then there was only one meeting originally in Oregon, for example, in a community of less than 250 people. So they make sure that their notifications are not where there's a large body of people. Um, The notification, they don't, in other words, the press never picked it up. The, they make sure that their notification is so small that no one's going to write about it or talk about it. Can we hold accountable our congressmen and women and senators who have missed this little notice? Who knows how many notices they get? Um, well, they got a letter. They got a formal letter to their office. And the office staffs here for Congressman Thompson, um, his, his, the staff in his various offices were notified but our congressman initially made the decision that it wasn't important enough to tell us. And you see, we um, once we found out by accident, then we approached him and said, look, if you don't do something about this, <laughs> there's going to be a rebellion of your constituents in all of his various counties that he covers. It's actually treasonous not to tell us. Well, they should tell us that it's going to impact that many marine mammals, that the testing is going to be in national marine sanctuaries. And you see, the reason they didn't want to tell us is we would have rise, risen up and said no to this Navy practice. They're going to do what they're going to do anyway, aren't they? Uh, no, because we're going to try and object to some of this that's now going to be upcoming. Because um, Southern California, Henry Waxman allowed that to go forward in Southern California and the Southern California range is already in operation. So, but when we got noticed later and accidentally found out,